If I can make an impression on one, just one of you kids that's here, that's really all I want. Because if somebody somewhere had made an impression on me, maybe I wouldn't have done it. This is Flory Fisher's story, told in her own you know, words Wilson, to a group of New York City high school time, students typical of teenagers it. across the country. But I'm, I'm very it's not a pretty story. This group here, and it's a story of heartbreak and hell. That I would like it's a story of 23 Firstly, wasted years in the life of a drug addict. A 17 of those years behind bars. Chance. Gut level, I'd like to be high. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a great feeling. You smoke marijuana and shoo, it's great. You go further than that, it's even greater. I can't smoke one stick of pot because I am an addictive personality. My culture just smoked marijuana. Until we got on horse. And, you know, you're young. You know, you're beautiful with young youth. Who here can tell me that if somebody says, man, that was a gas, you ain't lived until you took a snort of horse. Don't you want to try it? You know it can't happen to you. You're not going to get hooked with one shot, and you're not going to get hooked with one shot. You start needing $185 a day. And you know what? The bank presidents don't have that kind of money at their command. The people say, give me statistics. The hell with statistics. I don't want a piece of paper with numbers on it. I am unto myself a statistic, the only statistic I need. Along with me, 23 years of living with nothing but gutter hypes and junkies. It sucks every part of you up in a negative way. You know, I know a Harlem where I laid on Dope Street. I cop there. All the cocaine, all the caps, all the, the $25 half loads and the $50 bundles, I was zonked. Rebel. By all means, rebel. And start using pills. Start using goofballs. Start using marijuana. Start using horse. And then go to jail. And in the morning, because the smell is ridiculous, they hose you out with a power hose. He was a young kid. He had two years of college. And you know what I did? I made a pimp out of him, an 18-carat pimp. I was young, I was fly, I was pretty, and I was out selling my body. Ten years later, I had to be $10 cheaper, and I wasn't a call girl. I became a madam. Then I became a street whore. You know, every day that I spent in jail, I dreamt about the time I could cook my breakfast up in a teaspoon, and I'm sure every one of you have been exposed to that type of talk. Now, you know, you can be smart or you can be stupid, and I know the code of the streets goes for even the squares. You don't want to tell. You know, you don't want to be a rat fink. I would take his name, take his address, say he's smoking pot, and to use the expression of the streets, I'd drop a dime on him. I'd put a 10-cent stamp in an envelope, put his name and address on it, and drop it in the mailbox. Sure, you hear, they're taking dope. Their pupils are pinpoints. They're on the nod. They're hanging over there. Their, their nose is down to the floor. That's fine. You're taking morphine or you're taking heroin. Methadrine, speed, dizoxin, amphetamine, cocaine, getting high, stealing a car, laying out on the beach, smoking pot. One of her college buddies came to visit her and bought her a cube of sugar which had LSD in it, and she decided to escape. The avenue of escape she used was to go out the sixth floor window. And she took one sheet. With that length, she had to tie it to the bedpost, and she lowered herself out the sixth floor. So, of course, she dropped five stories. I repeat, be a rat fink. And I repeat, if you smoke marijuana, you know, if you think about smoking marijuana, there's something wrong upstairs, and you do need a little psychiatric help.